Just today, um, we're moving on to part three, the roadmap to buying your own home. Previously, we will have discussed with you knowing how much you can borrow, then how much you need to bring to the deal. Today, as I say, we're going to focus on actually securing the mortgage. Then we'll move forward on to well, finding your own home and then ultimately paying for it. Okay, But today, we're going to basically um, focus on securing the mortgage from the bank. As I said, it's all well and good knowing how much they'll borrow, how much you need to bring to the table. But ultimately you're going to get to have the bank to agree to to lend you that amount um it's really really important to actually do this ahead of time because before you start going looking at properties um an agent will won't will, won't talk to you won't engage you and won't let you buy a home unless you have secured your mortgage so it really really is important because otherwise what can happen is you fall in love with a property then try to get all your paperwork together try to get the banks to say yes and it could take three, four, five, six weeks, depending on how quick you move with paperwork and how quick the bank are at a particular point in time. And then the home that you see for your future is going before your own eyes. So this is really, really important to doing um, getting it done as quickly as possible. It will last for six months, so you do then have time to, to find your own home. So, as I said, knowing what you qualify is one thing, getting the bank to agree is then obviously what's most important. So what's the bank look at when they're assessing an application? Well, first thing is obviously we discussed previously is the income. So that's really the first thing they look at, but we, we've already discussed that. So I, what I want to look at it in more detail is um, what, what, what else is then required? Well, proving to the bank that you can meet the repayments. This is crucial. So how does one do that? Well, okay, your monthly savings. This needs to be consistent. This needs, they need to see either a savings account or your current account going up by a specific amount every single month. If it's jumping up back and forth, they don't consider that as consistent. So if you're having to be getting bonus payments or commission or, and, and suddenly one month your savings go up by 2,000, previously it wasn't going up at all, that is not consistent. So they need to see consistent savings. Rent can ultimately be the, the main thing that actually will show the bank you can meet the repayment. So again, it's really, really important that this is going out of your bank account, that it can be seen. So if your landlord, is, if you're giving cash, make sure you take the rent out at the same time every single month, even if it has to be done in two drafts, whether it be 700 and 800, if there's a maximum what you can take, you just need to be able to pinpoint it. Ultimately, it is much easier to just make it have a direct debit set up with your landlord because then it's there in black and white and no one can, be, can dispute it. Paying rent to a family member, don't be putting down your mum or your dad's name on the bank statement. Just would put down the actual narration rent. Again, that's something that could be that could trip you up at a later, at a later point because they won't allow rent to family member be, be included. So just to keep that in mind. Obviously, they will then look at loans that you might be repaying that will be gone because that's a commitment that you're currently making, which won't be there. So that will, will work in your favor. Um, once you've proved to the bank, they then will look at the profile of the borrower. Now, what I mean by that is, well, I often say to people, if you looked at your own bank accounts, would you lend you the money? Okay, and that's kind of a, a drastic thing to say, or a drastic way of putting it. But ultimately, what they don't want to see is, in someone's bank accounts, they don't want to see any referral fees, so misdirect debits, whether it be for phone bills, electricity bills. They don't want to see any gambling, okay? They don't want to see... Um, anyone who's living perpetually in their overdraft. It's just not the profile. They're looking to lend to someone who can demonstrate what they would call good money managed practices. So if any of the above are there, it's certainly going to go against the application. Now also, any mispayments and loans in the past can cause serious, serious problems. So if you have any inkling that a loan, you may have had a problem in the past, really, really important that you actually see where you stand. So there's two reports that the banks will run. One is called the ICB.ie and the other is through the Central Bank Credit Register. I would advise running these now so that you can see where you stand. If there's a problem, then it can be addressed ahead of time. It's always better to be bringing the situation to the bank's attention rather than them coming and saying, what happened here? And it just makes a huge, huge difference. So if there's anything in the niggling in the back of your head thinking, might have had a problem, please do run those reports. It could save you 
so much time and also it could be the difference between being refused or being um, granted a mortgage so i'm hoping that gives you a very very good over ground as to what you need to do and how you need to be getting your bank accounts in order so that when you feel you're ready to buy the banks also agree looking forward to talking to you again in the near future um, that's john coleman and i hope you got some value from this thank you bye i want you to get together